The empathy interview is an approach designed to find out as much as possible about a person's experience as a user of a space, a process, an objective or an environment. It helps to understand the choices that people make and the reasons why they make them. By entering and understanding another person's thoughts, feelings and motivations, the interviewer can understand the choices that people make, understand their behavioral traits and identify their needs. This helps in a second step to innovate and create products or services that are suiting the best of that person. The empathy interview is therefore the first element of the design thinking method. Through ethnographic research techniques like in-depth interviews or through storytelling, we can learn how different target groups feel about the problem we are trying to solve and how they might fix it if they could. In general, the process is divided in two steps. The first one is the empathy interview, which is followed in a second step by an empathy mapping, which will later on bring together various interviews. The empathy interview is an open interview technique. The user or the target group is always in the center. The interviewer should use an open approach in conversational style rather than using a prepared question catalog. The conversation will always follow the way and the needs of the target group. The interviewer can ask specific questions and steer the conversation, but never should take over full control or come with a structured interview. Ideally, another person is writing down the key thoughts and key observations during the interview on single post-it notes, which are later collected for the empathy map. The main elements of the empathy interviews are as follows. Ask open-ended questions rather than questions that lead to a yes or no answer. Avoid asking leading questions like, do you think it is important to install an alarm? Be prepared for the interview and prepare that the interview conversation might require you to ask side jumps. Challenge the assumptions you hold by directly asking the customer. Make sure to write down exactly what the person says, not what you think they might mean. Be sure to observe the person's behavior, intonations, pauses and interaction with the surrounding and see what you can learn from the context. If granted permission from the interviewee, also take some snapshots. Empathy interviews are a tool based on storytelling because it helps to listen to the real experiences of people. The open question lets them tell their concrete activities and experiences, but also their thoughts and feelings. For understanding their needs, we have to go of course beyond the simple words and understand the real challenges as well by understanding the non-verbal expressions. An empathy map is a collaborative visualization used to articulate what we know about a particular type of user. Empathy maps provide a glance into who a user is as a whole and are not chronological or sequential. It externalizes knowledge about users in order to create a shared understanding of the needs and aid in the decision making. Traditional empathy maps are split into four quadrants. Says, thinks, does and feels, with the user in the middle. The says quadrant contains what the user says out loud in an interview or some other usability study. Ideally it contains verbal and direct quotes from the interview. The Things quadrant captured what the user is thinking throughout the experience. Ask yourself, what goes through the user's thoughts? What matters to the user? It is possible to have the same content in both says and things. However, pay special attention to what users think, but may not be willing to say. Try to understand why they are reluctant to share. Are they unsure, self-conscious, polite? or afraid to tell others something? The dust quadrant encloses the actions the user takes. What does the user do? 
How does the user go about doing it? The fields quadrant is the user's emotional state, often represented as an adjective plus a short sentence for context. Ask yourself, what worries the user? What does the user get excited about? How does the user feel about the experience? While create a valid and useful empathy map, go through these steps. Define scope and goals. Ask yourself, what user or persona will you map? Define your primary purpose for the empathy mapping. Does it really fit to your own goals? Second step, gather materials. Third step, collect research. Gather the research you will be using to fuel your empathy map. Empathy maps are a qualitative method, so you will need qualitative inputs. Fourth step. Individually generate sticky notes for each quadrant. Once you have research inputs, you can proceed to mapping as a team. In the beginning, everybody should read through the research individually. As research team member, digest the data. They can fill out sticky notes that align to the four quadrants. Next. Team members can add their own notes to the map on the whiteboard. Fifth step. Converge to cluster and synthesize. In this step, the team moves through the stickies on the board collaboratively and clusters similar notes that belong to the same quadrant. Name your clusters with themes that represent each group. Repeat themes in each quadrant if necessary. The activity of clustering facilitates discussion and alignment. The goal being to arrive at a shared understanding of your users by all the team members. Polish and plan. Last step. If you feel that you need more detail or you have unique needs, adapt the map by including additional quadrants like goals or by increasing specificity to existing quadrants. Depending on the purpose of your empathy map, polish and digitize the output accordingly. Be sure to include always the user. As their name suggests, Empathy Maps simply help us build empathy with our end users. When based on real data and when combined with other mapping methods, they can remove bias from our designs and align our team on a single understanding of the target group, discover weaknesses in our approach, uncover target group needs that the target groups themselves may not even have be aware of, understand what the target group drives and guide us towards a meaningful, innovational approach and social impact.